Museums are at their best when they can communicate their expertise with a passion and warmth that makes anyone begin to understand and delight in their subject. And I think that this book does that in spades. It comes from London's Natural History Museum. It's called The Secret Life of Flies and is written by the curator of flies at that museum called Dr Erica McAllister. It's a book that is written with warmth and wit and passion and takes readers from the heights of Peruvian mountains, through latrines, down into cowpats, introducing them to an incredible range of creatures, including tipsy vinegar flies, hairy drain flies, and flies that can survive at the bottom of frozen lakes. Now, flies are relatively numerous. There are 17 million of them for every man, woman, and child on the planet, but they're also relatively unknown. There are only, I think, 160,000 species that have been recorded from an estimated 400 to 800,000 species on the planet. But the really good news is they have a fantastic champion in Erica McAllister and her team at the Natural History Museum. And this book is something that has entirely opened my eyes up to a corner of the natural world and it changed my mind. Because I don't know about you, but whenever I heard a buzz, I would be rolling up my newspaper and wielding it rather ineffectually at the fly, although I now know the secret, Erica. Thank you. But it's actually made me stop and think because a very important theme of this book is underlying how important flies are to our life. Flies are important as pollinators. They pollinate fruits including mango, including chili peppers and the coca fruit. So no flies, no chocolate, and no walnut whips. That should make you stop and think. But also they play an important role in um, recycling organic waste. And a world without flies would be a world where we, we would be knee deep in corpses, in decaying leaf litter, and in, how do I put this delicately, in doo-doo. But this, and that's really before we even consider their role in medicine. And Genghis Khan was ahead of the game in this, in this area, because it's report, reputed that he had a caravan full of maggots that he used to treat his soldiers' wounds. And even today, maggots are used in helping to cure wounds in surgery. But they're also used in research into alcoholism and in biological uh, control. So there is a fly that is trying to keep down the numbers of the snail that carries the Bilharzia disease. And anyone who watches CSI will know how important flies are in terms of identifying the time of death of a particular corpse. Now, this book is not just making a utilitarian case for the importance of flies, although it does that very well. It's also show, it also shows how magical, how extraordinary, and how, I can't believe I'm saying it, is how beautiful they are as creatures. So we get introduced to flies that can inflate their eyes by pumping in air. We get introduced to horse flies that can travel at 90 miles per hour chasing a female. And we get introduced to these gloriously handsome chaps. That's the hairy drain fly. This is the very charismatic, I'm going to have to read his name out, I'm sorry, Cuteribra emasculator. How can you fail but be charmed by that guy? And I'm even beginning to think that the blue bottle lava has a kind of geek chic to him. This is a great book. It makes you see a corner of the natural world in a different light. And it's available for $9.95 on Museum Bookstore. Well worth a read.